familiar. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so down, yeah. Um, I guess to start, yeah. tell me about yourself. Um, yeah. Start from 20, uh, you went to school. Yeah. Curtis, right? Yeah, yeah, so. Ah, we're gonna go that far back. Let's do it. Let's um, see where where the change. Happens. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so graduated graduated high school in '06. Mm -hmm. I'm originally from the Bronx. Okay. Right. So I went to high school in the city. Uh, environmental studies, 56 and 10th Ave, between 9th and 10th. Uh, from there, I went to SUNY Purchase. So I graduated with a bachelor's in, in econ, which I don't know why. <laughs> I went there really for baseball. You know, I played baseball my entire life. Yeah. You know, typical Dominican. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I went there for baseball, ended up getting an econ degree, did pretty well for the most part. Um, graduated in 11, right? And then I thought the, the right path from there was let me get into banking, right? And I don't know why, for some reason, a lot of us back then, at least like in that circle that I was in, thought that banking was like, oh, if you get into banking, you're going to make it, yes. right? So I came into banking. I did already have experience in sales. Um, I should backtrack even further. While I was in college, I worked for, uh, I, don't know, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Primerica, Primerica Financial Services. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got licensed when I was there. So I had my life insurance license, my Series 6 and 63. So I was a financial planner at the age, at the young age of 19 years old, right? You know, trying to sell life insurance. You know, I did, I did my thing. It wasn't, I wasn't like, you know, cranking out a bunch of deals, but I did my thing. But that taught me a lot of sales. Right. Um, that's where I developed a lot of my sales skills, because before that, I worked in a life insurance office. Um, my buddy's my buddy's uh, father had an office in the city and I was just there like pushing paper around for them. But I got to learn the lingo of life insurance and sales, pop into meetings. And um, but from there, right after I graduated college, I used all of those skills as a banker. Um, and I was at Wells Fargo, actually. So I was at Wells Fargo from 2011. 2011 till 2016, so I was there for about like five, a little over five years, yeah. right? I worked my way up. I was a personal banker, licensed banker, because I had my licenses, so I was pushing investments and things like that. Then I became a branch manager, pushing sales, pushing promotions for other people in the branch and all that. The biggest team- How I, old are you when you were when you became a manager? When I was a manager, I was 24, okay. 25. So you made it. Yeah, at that point I thought I made it. Yeah, yeah, I was, you know. <laughs> Single, living by myself, you know, I had a studio uh, in, in the Heights, you know, so it wasn't like Manhattan, it was the Heights, Upper Manhattan, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I was, you know, I was, I was, I was living life, you know, um, became a branch manager, and then from there, bounced around different branches, then eventually I went, to, uh, I left Wells Fargo and I went to Connect One Bank, because at that point, I met my then girlfriend, now wife, uh, we moved in together, and I was commuting from Jersey to New York every single day for a year, because that's where I used to work, in New York. Then eventually I transferred out here and then ended up working for Connect One Bank. I was a manager there for less than a year. And then from there, I went to Bonesa Bank in Union City. But then um, at that point, you know, the, our real estate portfolio was cranking. We were adding more and more rentals because that's how we first started in the industry um, to the point where I didn't really need that W2 income. Wait, let's go back. Let's go back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. right. When did we start real there estate, right? So I started, my wife and I, we both started back October 2015. Okay. October 2015, so I was still in Wells Fargo. Um, yeah, I was still in Wells Fargo. Um, bought our first house, two family in Pasig. Still have it to this day, same tenants to this day. Um, and then that was the first one. The second one we bought in May of 2016. And then we just got the ball rolling yeah. from there. You know, long story short, by the time I left my W-2, I practically replaced my net income from my W-2. So at that point, with our with our rental income, yeah. and at that point, you know, I had my personal phone and my business phone for for work, and I was really answering my personal phone more than my business phone, handling you know our portfolio, our rentals. Yeah. Um, so at that point, it just made sense to just leave, left on good terms, gave them you know uh, two months notice, told them whoever you end up hiring, I'll train them, any projects I have, I'll wrap them up for you, left on really good terms. Been trying to actually get lending from them ever since, actually, <laughs> which you know we're we're working on that. Um, but long story short, now I've been in the I've been a full time investor since um, October twenty nineteen. Gotcha. Amen. How many units did you have by the time that you quit? By the time we quit, if I'm not mistaken, we must have had. 15, 16 units mm -hmm. at that point. And you were comfortable enough at that yeah. point. To yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like we listen, we it was. 
it was a decision that we ultimately made between my wife and I. And she saw, number one, how busy we were getting because it was just, we were managing different projects at the same time, managing different uh, contractors, you know, tenant, things like that. But she also saw how miserable I was at my job too because I just, I was checked out. I just didn't need, we didn't need that stress from that W2 anymore mm -hmm. when we could have been taking all that energy and pouring it into the business. So at that point, it just made sense to leave the W2 with about 15, 16 units and then we just, skyrocketed from there you know we it's funny because we october 2019 and then i met you guys literally a couple weeks later at bpcon uh, that yeah, same year yeah, yeah. and look you just left your job at that point right? <coughs> yeah i was fresh fresh oh, out of the w2 I didn't know that. yeah fresh out of the w2 and I, we just met you guys like literally a couple weeks after that in nashville so all right so to go back to your first rental yeah. right yeah. like what like was there a turning point? Was there like a, like what was it that was like I'm jumping in? You know, a lot of people yeah. get the what is it? Um, the itch. Where they analyze a lot of properties and analysis, analysis paralysis. paralysis right? Yeah, you took the jump. Yeah, so it's funny we we didn't have analysis paralysis per se, right? So I have to give credit where credit is due. Um, good buddies of ours, uh, Jay and Erica, their company is Bluesmer, Bluesmer Investments. Mm -hmm. They were the ones that actually introduced us to real estate, right? Jay Jarlin, he was my manager right? When I was a banker, mm -hmm. right? And he was already getting into um, real estate, getting rentals back in like 2011, 2012 in Passaic. So that's where our, the majority of our, of our portfolio is. And they were buying properties back then for like a buck 30, a buck 40, two family, three family. Like it was crazy back then, right? You could just cherry pick your deals. Um, but they wanted us to get in because it was just, it was so fruitful for them, right? That's how they are. They like to share their knowledge. And we were just, we were very hesitant because Melinda, my wife, she was living in Jersey and I was living in New York. Mm -hmm. And we didn't like the idea of being that, it's not that it was far away, but not being local enough to like, if we had a situation to handle it immediately, yeah. you know, or snag a deal whenever we wanted, right? So once we crossed the bridge or I crossed the bridge and we moved in together, literally like a month or two later, we just closed on our first deal. Nice. Yeah. And then the rest was history from there, man. Gotcha. What, Gave what was like the proof of concept for us was we we closed on the house. It was you know back then it was turnkey like to the, like now down and now we definitely do a brand new renovation. <laughs> but back then it was turnkey right like we were just getting started. It was definitely livable. Um, we slapped a for rent sign and over the weekend we were rented. And I was like, oh okay, this is not that hard, right? <laughs> like I slapped a for rent sign and we're just getting bl I'm getting blown up phone call after phone call and I'm showing it showing it showing it but I didn't like just take the first tenant like I literally our mentor uh, our realtor OT he was like make sure you get your pay stubs make sure you you know verify all this good stuff before you actually sign it on, on a dotted line with a lease and we ended up uh, renting to two families who are still there to this day and deposits came in first month's rent came in and then we paid our mortgage, we paid our expenses. We're like, oh man, we're caking right now, you know? Like it was nice. It was like, back then it was like, I think we were cash flowing like $1,200 a yeah. month, something like that. And it was like, after everything was said and done, yeah, that was yeah. like in our pocket. I was like, okay, and then my wife had her job, we had our job. So it was just like a savings. It was just stashing, stashing that away, stashing that away um, until we had enough to get into another deal, right? Um, but that was like, that was a proof of concept, right? They were like, okay, no, this is pretty cool. This works. Yeah. And um, let's see if we can repeat this in 2022. Here we are, you know? Boom. So yeah. then now comes 2019. Yeah. You're yeah. like, that's it. I'm jumping in full time. Yeah, man. Yeah. What was the goal then? The goal yeah. then was to actually turn this into a business, okay. right? So back up until that point, it was just like a side hustle, right? Um, pick up a property here, pick up a property there. 2019 was actually the, the one year that we did... We were, we were averaging up until that point, one to two deals a year, right? That year, 2019, was when we got introduced to hard money. So we doubled from two deals to four deals that year, right? Which for us was a lot, right? Um, in hindsight, 2020, it's, you know, it, it is what it is, but at that time, it was, there was a lot. But when we did all that, we were like, okay, we learned, hard money's been around for God knows how long. Yeah, I'm sorry, and what is hard money? Hard money is basically, you know, local lender, sometimes even a national lender, mm -hmm. um, and they will lend um, on the deal. Yeah, they'll lend the right you, they'll check your credit and all that good stuff, but they're not going to ta ask for tax returns, proof of income or anything like that. They're basically just looking at the numbers of the deal. Gotcha. If it's a good deal, they're gonna fund it for you. Cool. Um, they might, depending on the lender, depending on your experience, 
Um, it could be a little pricey. Um, for us, it was a little pricey. Knowing how hard money works now and doing a lot of hard money, we're like, damn, they took advantage. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. You know, it can't turn back time. Yeah. But that year was the year where, like, the business really started cranking. And we were like, that's why my phone was blowing up so much. Because I had multiple deals and we were still adding more. Um, it's funny, my, the last day of my W-2, I closed on a three family I'm sick, at home with a, no, uh, a mobile notary. Yeah. That was my last day at work and I signed. And then the very next day, I'm there at the property. Uh, we bought that property sight unseen and it was a three family. We knew it was a three family, but we didn't know for sure, for sure. Um, everything checked out. Everything. Wait, what do you mean by that? Yeah, so it looked, from the outside, it looks like a single family. Oh, okay, okay. Right? Okay. But it had three gas meters outside. So we're like, okay, that's a good sign. But then when we called the town, verified everything, we're like, yeah, everything, this is what the town always says. Yeah, it's a three family, but we don't know until we get in. I was like, okay. So then I, I, I did a little <laughs> detective work and I drove up to the property one day. I'm like, okay, um, there's an apartment right here up front and there's a long driveway. I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna hop it real quick. What, ran down the driveway. <laughs> I was like, okay, there's two units here. I don't know if they're occupied. I knew the first one was. But these two, I'm not sure if they were occupied or not. Turns out they were vacant. Yeah. So we closed. When we got in, we had to bust down those two doors because they were vacant. Um, they were. It was an official three family. Oh, we got it for like 300 grand in the safe back then. Cool. So, which now is like amazing. But um, yeah, no, 2019 was the year that everything just you know turned around for us. Yeah. Nice. So 2019, yeah. you're starting a business. That's it. No yeah. more side hustle. Yeah, What's the bread and butter now? So you're running a yeah. business. From A to Z, from marketing all yeah. the way to this position, how's that looking like now? It's been a roller coaster, dude. You guys know it's been a. You guys were the ones that actually like, really like tweaked our mindset because up until that point, we were strictly buy and hold, buy and hold, buy and hold because that's what got us to that point where I didn't need my W two anymore, right? Sure. But you know, if I could go back in time and I would have met you guys earlier, I would have been flipping right to yeah. use that active income to get into more deals. Um, I would have learned more about marketing. Um, I would have learned more about, you know, networking with wholesalers, right? Yeah. Um, we didn't learn about wholesalers until, until 2019, you know? Four yeah. years into the into the business, we just knew about wholesalers then. Yeah, and yeah. it was because... You were buying from the MLS the whole time, right? Yeah. Yeah, because back then it was pretty easy to get deals yeah. over the MLS. Our realtor would just send us a deal. They were like, you want it? I can get it for you for X. We run our numbers, send me the contract. Go. Let's go. Let's just, <laughs> and we trust them so much that we'll sign it and then we'll walk the property, yeah, yeah, you know? Because yeah. that's just the relationship we have with them. Um, but yeah, dude. What was the question again? Um, from marketing, bread and butter, typical deal. Now that it's yeah. a business, from yeah. So up to, until that point, like I was saying, we were buy and hold. Mm -hmm. Since then, after meeting you guys and actually, you know, getting into some mentorship as well, yeah. we've been flipping a lot, right? We've been flipping. We've wholesaled. We've only wholesaled one deal, but a lot of our a lot of our deals have come either from our marketing or from networking with other wholesalers. Gotcha. You know, so we've been. It's funny because October 2019, I went full time in the business. We closed on that three family in 2019. January 2020, we closed on a four family in Wayne. That was also a rental. Those those seven yeah. units right there were rentals. And uh, March 2020, the world shuts down. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm at home pacing. I have a four month old, and I'm like, did I make the right decision? <laughs> Damn, like, what are we gonna do? Um, but you know, talking with you guys, I'm like. You guys are still buying like you guys have been doing this longer than me like if you guys are buying i'm definitely going to keep buying <laughs> so we pivoted at that point we're like you know what the market did slow down for a little bit we all know that but then it just picked up like crazy and we just landed on a couple good opportunities where we're like you know what let's let's test this and that first flip was a two family in patterson uh went extremely well extremely we made after everything was said and done we must have made like close to 50 on that one as a very first flip yeah. so proof of concept done then we had another one in Cl let's in talk about that deal how do you get it that one was an mls deal believe it or not MLS. well actually no sorry it was not an mls deal it was okay. a pocket listing Got from it. our realtor um that it was gonna go on the mls yeah and he brought it to us right before they, he was gonna list it yeah we got it for 230 put about 40 into it and yeah. sold it for 370 when hard money, yeah. Um, I think we did the, yeah. So that was when lending tightened up because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So instead of going ten percent down, we had to go I think either fifteen or twenty percent down. Gotcha. Um, so after getting our money back, expenses, all that good stuff, we made close to fifty on that one nice. as a very first flip. Yeah. And then ever since then, I've, we flipped since March of twenty twenty up until May of twenty twenty two. We've 
have flipped, I want to say, six or seven properties oh. so far. Yeah, and it's all thanks to you guys, man. <laughs> no, but you so cheers to you work, guys. Man. No, no you guys sure. were the ones that like got the <laughs> wheels churning, and we're like, you know what? Let's test this out. You know? So, yeah. Yeah. So that's what we've been doing. Our bread and butter is still always buy and hold. Okay. Buy and hold. Um, so much that this year, because the climate that we're in, things are starting to change a little bit, and because of like the family dynamic, we do want to focus more on on uh, incre- uh, growing the portfolio okay. and adding more rentals to the portfolio, so that. Uh, Eventually, by the end of the year, by the end of the year, hopefully, um, my wife is full time in the business. Okay. You know, because she's the one in the background. I always say, I'm the one out making a mess, and then she's in the back cleaning it up. Right? <laughs> yeah. She goes, Oh my god, another deal. <laughs> How much are we paying? I'm like, Babe, trust me. Don't worry. And then she's the one like putting yeah, everything yeah. together, and it all works out at the end. How involved is she now in the business? She's still pretty involved. She's still pretty involved. Um, she's not boots on the ground like me. She's not out visiting property. She's not talking to sellers. She's not at closings, um, but she's handling the financing. She's um, like right now with a couple of refis, she's the one talking to all the banks and all the lenders. She's the one handling the marketing. She's the one handling REI SIF. Mm-hmm. Um, she's the one taking care of all that stuff. So that's her involvement, because that's as much as she can do, mm-hmm. right? She's home right now with, on maternity leave, but even when she's working, um, when weekend, when like work is done during like at night, she's on it, making sure like things are still moving, you know. So sometimes she will talk to contractors just to make sure that um, things are being done. She's she's been more involved in that lately with like the design of some of our flips and things like that. Um, because she, you know, we want things to look right according to the price point that we're at, you know. Sure. So yeah, that's her involvement at the moment. Yeah, man. Got it. So in terms of your core team right now, it's you and your wife. Yeah, core team is me and my wife. We we work with a couple different realtors that are like they will either send us deals or we'll go to them to list our deals um yeah that's pretty much it dude nice yeah, yeah, yeah. and um in terms of like now you got a full-blown business yeah. i'm sure you've got a lot of challenges yeah. um just throw out a couple of them yeah a lot a lot of challenges dude <laughs> i mean uh, when you scale and like last year okay so prior to like i said 2019 we did uh four deals that was double the amount that we did the year prior right 2020 it was COVID um, so 2020 we only did two deals that year right um, we did no I'm sorry we did three deals we bought a, a four family and then we flipped we flipped a proper I think we flipped like two properties that year right um, 2021 we scaled all the way up to nine deals right so from four to two to nine almost double that was a lot Right, so out of the nine, eight were uh, two. Uh, out of the out of the nine, two were rentals, um, six were flips, and one was a wholesale. Gotcha. Right, um, the wholesale actually came from our sign that we put up at our flip in Patterson. Neighbors right up the block on that same block, a couple doors down, saw our sign. They called us up. We locked it up, and then we ended up assigning it to a buddy of ours. Um, so. Where was I going with this? Uh, just, uh, <laughs> Challenges. Challenges. Yeah. yeah, so going from four deals to nine deals, right? Yeah. We've spoken about this before. A lot of things a lot of things fall through the cracks. A lot, a lot. So that's where, you know, scaling is good, but you have to have the right systems and processes in place. You're not gonna have those as you're scaling, but you need to learn from those mistakes as you're scaling. So that's what we've done. So going into this year, we know, okay, we're gonna scale. But number the one the number one mistake that we made was putting a lot not I don't want to say all of our eggs but a lot of our eggs with one contractor mm. right um, to the point where we we don't even work with him anymore right which is unfortunate and it's because we stretched them too thin but at the same time he didn't have to take all the work either yeah, right yeah, yeah. so it's like it's it's a double edged sword it's you know it's a two way street you know we're gonna give you the business but if you can't take it don't take it. You know, but he ended up taking it, and that delayed a lot of our projects as well. But we worked with him primarily because we had a long-standing relationship. Um, his quality of work was good; it was decent, and the pricing was very, very good. Gotcha. Like it was like very good pricing. But you also get what you pay for. So when you give a GC a lot of work and you're spreading them too thin. If their quality of work is decent, it's going to start going down sure. as you give them more and more deals, right? So that's what started happening. So that's that's actually like the number one thing I would recommend is if you're gonna scale, try working with more than one contractor. Mm-hmm. So now at this point, we're, we work 
well now we're we were working with three but now we're not working with that individual anymore so now we have two contractors that we work with now gotcha. um and that's helped us tremendously tremendously yeah um so it's like know that you have another contractor you work oh, absolutely with? okay absolutely good. because they go to the properties i was saying that's perfect yeah too, no right? absolutely so here's the thing so it's like we've learned working with several different contractors like their bandwidth like how many how, how big is your crew will determine how much work you can actually do but you know how much other jobs you have going on as well um so one one contractor he has a pretty decent sized crew including himself he's probably like seven or eight deep right and then we have another gc including himself four in total you see what i mean so it's like i know who i can go with but i also know okay the type of flip or type of renovation i, I want to go with yeah. i want to do who do I go to with when it, when it comes to those? Yeah. But we're also looking to work with other GCs as well gotcha. because we don't want to fall back into that same trap where we scale. Like now we go from nine deals in one year to you know maybe double eighteen. Yeah. We're still using the same GCs. That's not going to work either. So we got to add another two, maybe another three, just to be safe. You know gotcha. that way we can we can sleep better at night knowing that deadlines are being hit. And if we're not hitting deadlines, we're not like okay two three months overdue. You know gotcha. what I mean? Because sometimes sense. deadlines you won't hit them, but if you're supposed to, if you're supposed to be finished today, but you finish a week or two after, it sucks. But it's better than two, three months after. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. that's a great point that you're making too. Like, if you're looking to scale the business, the the flipping business, yeah. it's not just kind of getting more deals. It's also the back end of it. Absolutely. Right? Having the, the support team to be able to sustain having exactly. those flips being done efficiently. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just going to fall apart. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely, and that's and that's uh, we got to the point where that one particular GC. We had, once we, we had to let them go, unfortunately, we had to bring in those two GCs to now go finish those projects for us. Cost us more, but now one of them we just listed a couple of days ago, um, and the other one is gonna get listed in another two to three weeks. You know, so, whereas with the other guy, we probably would be another month out, yeah. you know? So, you know, that's one thing that I would highly, highly recommend. That's one of like the major, major challenges that we had yeah. in going from just four deals to then nine, you know, double the amount. Any recommendations for the listeners, like yeah. finding GCs? What yeah. are some of the tips that you have? So the first GC, the the one that we ended up not working with after, um, after two years actually, we worked with him for two years, we found him in Home Depot. So I, don't, I forget, I think I probably heard him in Bigger Pockets. Yeah. Like right going the there at like five, six in the morning. <laughs> I actually did that. I actually did that. I went there. Um, it's, it's funny. So I went there. Our first like big renovation was a two family in Pasig, um, in October of 2018. Yeah, October 28, uh, September of 2018. We we ended up we bought the property and then we started renovating in October. So I went to Home Depot a couple weeks before that, and I just literally I didn't introduce myself to GCs. I literally saw the vans coming up, took pictures, took pictures, took pictures, took pictures. And then once that house was vacant, I had a whole bunch of them come. I gave them a scope of work. This is what I want done. And I had like an open house. So I had one GC after another, after another, after another. I must have had like five GCs, six GCs. And out of the five or six, I only got like three or four bids. One of the bids came from that GC. Mm. But me going into a brand new renovation, like a, that was the biggest renovation we've done. That was like a, a when it was all said, it was like a $70,000 renovation. Up until that point, we were doing like, you know, 10, 15 little turnovers. That was it, you know? Um, so we were like, okay, let's, his bid came in, like, I was like, okay, this has to be like at least 60 to 70. His bid came in at like 35. I said, well, wait a second. I should have gone with him. I didn't go with him though. I did it because that scared me. I was like, because I've heard horror stories in the past where like a GC will underbid you, get in there, and then that number starts change increasing. Change order. Time, change order after change order, and then you're at 70 out of nowhere. Yeah. So I was like, no, I'm not gonna go with you. I ended up going with this other GC um, who was similar, like close to where we needed to be, but with some mortgages, we ended up hitting 70, but we ended up firing him. That was the first time we had a contractor issue. Um, paid him too much in the beginning, had a very little balance at the end, and um, he, he bounced, he said peace. He <laughs> said Let's talk peace. about that. Talk yeah, about yeah, how yeah. you structure the payments, because that's, that's yeah. really key. Yeah, know? yeah, like, yeah. How so, do you stay, stay protected at yeah. the same time while working with someone new that you haven't used Absolutely. Before? So now we break it up in four payments. So 25, 25, 25. That's, or 25, 25, 25, 25. Yeah. Um, with the other GC that we worked with for two years, we had a very interesting, uh, because we were giving him so much volume, he was at the point where he would just start a project for us and like two, three weeks later then ask for payment. Mm -hmm. Because we had so much trust in each other that it was an issue. 
But with our GCs, because since we're more structured now, we're just 25, 25, 25, 25. And there's gonna be a big lump sum at the very end. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna have to work for that. And then we're gonna do a final walkthrough. I'm gonna blue tape everything. And if I have to blue tape anything, you're still not gonna get your final payment. And once everything is correct, then we're gonna do one more final walkthrough and then I'm gonna release that payment to you. That's how that's how we do it now. Yeah. But with that GC, we had very we must have owed him maybe like three grand, four grand at the very oh, end of a seventy thousand dollar job. <laughs> Dudes coming at me with excuses. Oh my this guy had like a fleet of vans. My van is in the shop. I was like, dude, you have like five other vans. Why can't you come to this and just finish up what you had to do? So we had to fire him and ended up going with another GC. But we ended up working with that other GC that we ended up firing after yeah. two years um, because we had other projects. He ended up coming in closer to where we were. And, and then, you know, the rest was history. We did a lot yeah. of work together at that point. But um, that's how we found that GC. The, the two GCs that we're working with now came from referrals actually there and they're is. on instagram so you can see uh their their quality of work yeah. so like we would read like uh who, yeah ot was our, our our mentor our realtor he was the one that introduced us to them so he made the introduction we met them we walked some of their flips some of their yeah. projects that they have going on to, to saw the quality of work and then the rest was history cool. yeah Got you. Okay, so that's a pretty cool process. Like yeah. you're looking for referrals, yeah. you referral, you want to see the quality of work. Absolutely. Social media yeah. helps you verify like they, yes. they exist. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, it's 2022 now. Social media is it's where it's at. I mean, you guys are, are on social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our company, Blue Anchor Properties, we're on social media. Like people are people hear your company or you're trying to do business with them, they're gonna look you up. Yeah, you know, sure. it's 2022. You're just gonna it's a simple Google search. Mm -hmm. If you have something there, they're gonna see it, and then that's just one further step for verifying who you are and what you do yeah. you know so yeah we are looking for more gcs but i'm going to go back to the drawing board go back to the home depot it worked mm -hmm. you know um it has worked with like other like side projects that we've used in the past yeah um so why not like why reinvent the wheel you know unless we get more referrals when you're vetting a gc right let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah. like what are you looking for mm -hmm. what are some red flags that you see like that will kind of automatically rule them out as like i'm not going to work with you and what Absolutely. are some of the things that you want to look for so, so one of the, some of the things that, well, the main thing that's going to be a red flag is sloppy work. You know, we've done enough projects that up until this point where we just, I'm not, I'm not like a GC expert, but I can see if it's good work or not. You know, like <laughs> it's laying, laying down three by six subway tile. It should be nice and clean, crisp in a certain way, grouted in a certain way. And if it's all crooked and slanted, I'm sorry, I'm just not going to work with you. It's just that simple. We, we have... We, even if it's a rental or a flip, we have a standard that we want to meet and we're providing very, very nice housing um, for families out there, whether it's a rental or a flip, and we want to make sure we're providing quality. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the one thing that we're looking for is the quality of their work, right? Um, then the amount of work that they're, that they're actually doing, because if they, if they have a lot of projects going on, that means they're busy. That means that they're in high demand, right? That's, in my opinion, I think that's a good thing um, because if someone is in high demand, that means that they have to be pretty good. Their pricing, you know, like I always, whenever I talk to a new GC, I always say like, I'm an investor, right? I'm not looking for retail pricing. And if that's what you're gonna do, then let's just shake hands and walk away. No hard feelings. But know that if we end up working together, there's a possibility of getting more work as well. And that's work um, with that other GC. It's work with the two GCs that we have working with us right now and other people that we've done side projects with as well. Um, yeah, and then their payment structure. And <laughs> we've learned the hard way. That first guy wanted, uh, he wanted 50% up front for that big project, that first big project that we did. And I was able to negotiate him down to like 35% or something, which was still like a lot, yeah. you know, for a $70,000 project. Um, if they're asking for a lot of money up front, I'm, I'm not even gonna try to negotiate. Like, I, I, you need to be reasonable, yeah. you know, like, and I always let them know, okay, my payment, I always let them know my payment structure up front. 25, 25, 25, 25, that's what works for me because that's how I like to set up my scope of work when it comes to my draws and things like that. It just makes me makes my life a lot easier. Yeah. If they give me some sort of pushback, then that's kind of like a red flag for me too. You know, sometimes contractors unfortunately have a reputation of using their money to fund other projects yeah. and we don't want to, we don't want to go through that. So, yeah, yeah, man. yeah that's pretty much it. Yeah. All right, so Blue Anchor, where is it going next? Blue Anchor, where is it going next? So we are, go, like I said, this year, yeah. um, we're looking to grow the rental portfolio. Okay. Um, 
for several different reasons. Number one, like I said, so that my wife can work in the business full time at yeah. some point. Um, number two, tax purposes, yeah. right? Um, with the flips that we had last year, we added two rentals. It definitely helped us a lot for tax season. Mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely a huge plus when it comes to you know, all the write offs and depreciation and all that good stuff. Um, but we're looking to to grow the company where we're being more consistent with our marketing. Um, what kind of marketing? Are you doing? Uh, direct mail. Okay. Um, we are doing uh, Facebook ads. Okay. Um, so we're very active on Facebook. Um, you'll see our stuff pop up, whether it's like an educational video, but then we have very targeted ads, depending on you know where you are. Um, what type of searches you're doing on Google, those things are just very targeted to those individuals. Um, and we're now going to start playing around with like cold calling as well. Okay. So, but our bread and butter is direct mail. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, so we're looking to grow that, um, add a couple more flips into the pipeline, add a couple more rentals into the pipeline, and focus more on the wholesaling side okay. because we're still in a, in a market where people are still, investors are still gonna buy. Yeah. Since we're not going to flip as much and we want to add more rentals, we still want to have that active income. So if we're able to pop off a couple deals where they're, like I was telling you, five, ten, twenty thousand dollars a pop, yeah. then hey, that just keeps the marketing funnel going. For sure. You know, so yeah, that's nice. Really nice. And uh, before we wrap up, yeah, uh, one thing that made you say yes, and one thing that made you say no. One thing that made me say yes to real estate, man, it was the cash flow, man. Yeah, that cash flow the first time. It's funny, we used to collect our rents in cash. <laughs> so you still like <laughs> drive around? Oh, yeah, dude. Up until the point where I started freaking out, man. I had a, I would drive around with like a lot of cash. And I was like, I told my wife, I was like, babe, we gotta stop this. I was I was free I was getting super nervous, man. I was getting crazy nervous. So eventually I ended up switching everyone. Everyone now, they either pay us online or they um they go to the bank and deposit into the account. Yeah, sure. And that's it. I don't collect cash anymore. It got to the point where we were like maybe eight units in, and I was collecting eight rents between, and, and on top of that, I was driving around between the first and the fifth of the month, yeah. all over the place. I was going nuts. I, was, I just couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. And then on top of that, I was walking around with wads of cash. So I changed that around, but the one thing that made us say yes, <laughs> it's, crazy, it's crazy, right? I mean, that's how we started. You no, know? no, for sure. That's how we started, but eventually- you look back we, and laugh too now. Yeah, you, I, we look back at that. That was yeah, <laughs> man, seriously, dude. Seriously, no, I was twenty fifteen. <laughs> I was twenty fifteen. Yeah, no, we stopped that like, literally two years, and we're like, yeah, no, we can't do this. Yeah, we're yeah. done. Um, so that was the thing that made us say yes to real estate, I guess. What Any horror story? I horror stories. Well, I got the yeah. Patterson one. Remember? Oh my, we, dude, we have so many. <laughs> um, okay, so. <clears throat> Our Clifton flip. Okay. Remember our Clifton flip? Oh yeah. You, you guys, remember you that? Tenant. Yeah. Wait, yeah. They, they, wait, well, this, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I take full responsibility. We took the wholesaler's word for it okay. that the house was going to be delivered vacant, and the first floor was. I have the keys. I go up to the second floor. And it's like not opening, and I call the wholesaler, and they're like, "Oh, that's weird. They were supposed to leave." I was like, "Yeah, that is weird. What's going on?" Long story short, it was a little old lady living up there. Yeah. And she uh, she understood the situation, um, and we were in no position to try to take advantage of her. We were like, Listen, we'll work with you, right? Like, we're gonna figure this out. Um, <laughs> her family ended up getting involved, and they ended up getting us for like five grand, cash for keys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and she took like three months to leave as well. What's cash for keys? Cash for keys is basically an agreement you make with you know people that are living in a property that you just bought um, to either you know up and leave and you pay them and they're leased early, compensate them either either way in some way. Yeah. So that five thousand dollars paid for her first month's rent, her security deposit somewhere else. Yeah. Um, we've done cash for keys for like uh, okay, you're gonna give us the keys, and we'll pay for you moving services. You know like. You figure it out, you come yeah. to some sort of an agreement, put it in writing as well. Mm -hmm. That's what we've done with every single cash key situation. That way there's no um, there's no pushback, there's no miscommunication. Yeah. Everything is in writing. Um, that was one horror story. We've done this. Every horror story is cash for keys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so do, you, do you do walkthroughs now the day you close? Um, yes. Last time, the last property we did, we did a walkthrough. Um, we didn't have any issues though. But it's funny because like, we some situations we know we're going into have properties with tenants. Of course. Yeah. So these two, these these last two in Patterson, we knew they were getting into with tenants. Right. And first floor was being rented by the room, so I didn't even have to give them cash for keys. I was like, guys, 
we don't do this, we don't do rooms. So I'm gonna give you guys at least like 45 days, 60 days the most, but they were out in like 30, that's what we were on. Um, second floor on the other hand, um, they didn't wanna leave. We offered them cash for keys. We got up to the point where we were like $2,500, like leave. They're like, no, we're gonna figure this out. We're gonna try, we're trying to find a place. We ended up evicting them. We ended up having to evict them, which was unfortunate. Yeah. Um, and also a surprise to us, because this was in, during COVID. Yeah. So we were under the impression that courts weren't, you know, doing evictions. Yeah. But next thing you know, like we filed for eviction in May okay. and we got the notice in October and then the tenant was out in December. For New yeah. Jersey, I mean, that's for New Jersey, it's pretty quick. Yeah, after during COVID. COVID. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and it was during COVID. Yeah, yeah. So that's the cool. reason why we ended up, uh, it was non-payment of rent, okay. right? So yeah, I mean COVID, but it was non-payment of rent, and the vir during the virtual hearing, the tenant never showed up, mm -hmm. so it was an automatic default on yeah. them, and it was, uh, you know, all it was just history from there for them. Um, and then the other one that we ended up buying, again, we knew we were buying it occupied, gave cash for keys for the first floor. They were out in about 45 days. Gave them, okay. I think it was like $1,500. They left, no problem at all. Yeah. The lady upstairs and her husband and, uh, hoarder house, yeah. and they did not want to leave. Like they wanted to leave, but because of their situation, the size of the family, the income situation, they just were having a hard time finding a place. Yeah. And that was another reason why that property, we just really weren't able to crank it, go and get it cranking as quickly as we wanted to. But eventually they ended up leaving. So we bought that house in April and they ended up leaving, I believe, in October. Gotcha. Believe Is that the one that you were kind of like, when we spoke months ago, that you were like, I don't even know if I want to like. Yeah, so the, one? Yeah, so well, mm -hmm. the other one, uh, we ended up just selling it as okay. is. We actually ended up making a profit, believe it or not, on that one. After all the holy calls, yeah, yeah, not yeah. much, but we ended up making a profit. The other one, I was like, damn, I don't even know what to do with this one anymore. I might as well, I, I was thinking, yeah. considering just throwing it on the market as is, they can and see what happens in this market. Anything can happen. Mm -hmm. But we decided, you know what? Let's just stick to what we wanted to do. It was vacant, brand new renovations on the market now. Nice. Bought it for two fifty, on the market for four twenty nine. A um, bunch of showings, waiting on some offers are supposed to come in, so that one should be pretty good. Um, those are our horror stories, man. Yeah. Other than like some GC stuff that we've already touched on, yeah. it's really the right now. Our our mindset is like dur during COVID, right? Like. If there's any type of mor uh, moratoriums that are still in place, <laughs> we're gonna definitely reconsider those properties, yeah, yeah, right? Because yeah. it's just not worth the headache, yeah. in my opinion. Some people will, but it's also we're in a market where it's like, it's not really a, you can't really like use it as a bargaining chip because if I'm not willing to pay you two fifty, another investor will mm -hmm. or more because there's nothing out here, you know. So it's like being a little more patient as well. That's something that we're practicing a lot. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty much it. Cool, man. I think we. Great place, great place to wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. Now, thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. Um, um, yeah, we'll add all your links and stuff yeah. right on the description. Sounds How do we find right? you? Like yeah. So we're on, I mean, I'm on Instagram, uh, dgar31, dgar31. That's my personal page. Mm -hmm. And um, our business page is Blue Anchor Properties on uh, on, uh, on Instagram and on Facebook as well. Got you. All our stuff is there. That's where you'll find us. And we're going to start putting up, up some stuff on YouTube as well. So. Nice. Yeah. Okay, cool, yeah. man. That was a pleasure, man. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Come out. Yeah, man. <laughs> that was fun, dude. That was fun. That was